So in this section of chemistry, it is all that matters. We're going to talk about some of the big ideas in chemistry. Now we're not going to go in depth. We're just going to mention some of the big ideas and some examples of how it's, how those ideas come into play. And all of these ideas we will go into further as we progress through our study of chemistry. As I mentioned in a previous video, probably we need to start with the fact that chemistry affects all other sciences. So chemistry is really the central science. Physicists, biologists, geneticists, ecologists, geologists, astronomers all use chemistry within their realm. So chemistry is of utmost importance to all the sciences. Big idea number two would probably be the beginning of all matter, which would be the structure that forms all matter, and that is the structure of the atom. So we have to begin with that all-encompassing idea that all matter is composed of these units called atoms. And we will go into this in great deep depth as we continue our study of chemistry. The third big idea is the understanding that those atoms we just talked about in the elemental structures like hydrogen and oxygen and carbon that they all bond together to form the matter that we deal with in chemistry. Uh, if we start a, with a simple molecule like water, H2O, two hydrogens and one oxygen, bonding together to form that all-encompassing matter that we need to sustain life on Earth. And if that bond does not take place in exactly the right way, we don't have water, we have hydrogen peroxide. Same as CO2, carbon and oxygen, where there's two atoms of oxygen. And that's great because a little bit of extra carbon dioxide will make you yawn. But if you change that to CO, carbon monoxide, with one oxygen, all of a sudden you get too much of carbon monoxide and you're dead. So these bonding interactions are quite important to our understanding of matter and chemistry. So big idea number four basically is the idea that when we talk about those molecules like CO2 and H2O, carbon dioxide and water, they bond together because elements react. They join together, they break apart, they give off energy in the that bonding or breaking of the bonds. So therefore there are reactions that take place so that the chemistry can happen. The next idea we would talk about is the kinetic theory. And the kinetic theory is the understanding that things change based on temperature and energy. So here we have an example and what we're going to do is we're going to change the energy and what we're going to look at is the liquid molecules here. If I reduce the energy, those molecules will slow down and slow down and eventually become a solid. They will crystallize into this really neat form that forms the ice. And if we warm that up again, notice the molecules start moving apart again. And if we heat it up, some of those molecules will start to escape. And eventually, if you take it up to 100 degrees, that energy is enough to allow the water to start almost disappearing in the form of steam into our atmosphere. So this kinetic theory, the understanding of how energy affects the molecules and the atoms that make chemistry happen. Idea number six would probably be the understanding that because math is the universal language, we need to quantify everything with numbers and amounts. And in chemistry, that number that am, or amount that is the basis of how we quantify matter, how we give matter its numeric values, is the mole, the understanding that every substance can be whittled down to a common number called the mole, and in this case it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, which is referred to as Avogadro's constant, and in this case a mole is kind of like a dozen. If you were to go in and order a dozen donuts, you'd get 12 donuts. Well, if you ordered a mole, you would get 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of whatever element or atom or, or material that you asked for. So this is a way of standardizing that quantifying of the matter in chemistry. Big idea number seven is the idea of matter and energy. 
and both of them have a conservation law that basically says that matter cannot be created nor destroyed but it can only be changed from one form to another and likewise energy cannot be created nor destroyed it can only be changed from one form to another well if you're burning logs you're using energy to change the matter the matter doesn't disappear it just becomes other stuff so the logs become the ash that's left behind and the steam that comes off in the form of the water that's heated up from the logs and then you have some carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide and other gases that are given off and some of that is just changed into the form of energy that is consumed in the flame but that energy is then transferred into the atmosphere in some way so matter and energy interact at all times neither can be created neither can be destroyed they're just in a constant state of changing from one form to another Big, I num big idea number seven would have to be carbon chemistry. And why is carbon chemistry so important? Well, because all life on Earth contains carbon. And since we're living and we contain carbon, we need to understand carbon chemistry. Carbon chemistry entails the petrochemical understanding of how we produce fuel and plastics. Organic chemistry is how plants function. Organic chemistry is how we survive. So therefore, carbon chemistry is little important to our survival here on Earth. So let's review those really quickly. We've got chemistry as the central science. We've got the understanding of the atom as the basis of all matter. We've got the understanding that those atoms bond and interact in some way, and those interactions create reactions that allow for the chemistry to happen. Then you've got the kinetic theory that using energy, you can change the matter in one form or another that we quantify everything using a thing called the mole. Finally, uh, we get to the understanding that matter and energy are constantly in a state of interaction, neither being created nor destroyed, just changing forms from one, one type to another. And lastly, that since we're here on Earth and we're a life form and all life forms contain carbon, that we must understand carbon chemistry.